My name's Maddie, and I used to live what you might call a pretty normal life. You know, the kind where your biggest worry is whether you'll get the window seat on the school bus. But then, out of the blue, my mom, Linda, landed a modeling gig. Yes, my lasagna-loving, carpool-driving mom turned into a high-fashion model, strutting down runways instead of grocery aisles. Initially, I was stoked. Guess what? My mom's a model. I tell anyone who'd listen, picturing all the glamorous outfits and behind the scenes stories I get to share. But soon, the glitz and glamour of mom's new job started to overshadow everything else, including me. Our home went from a cozy family hangout to a whirlwind of stylists, makeup, and never ending phone calls. It was like mom got swept up in a tornado of taffeta and tiaras, and I was left clinging to a tree stump, watching, with dad trying, and comically failing, to fill mom's shoes, I felt more and more like a background character in my own life. That's when I decided enough was enough. It was time for Operation Get Mom's Attention. First up, Operation Fashion Fiasco. If mom was all about fashion, I'd speak her language, right? So I put together the most eye-catching outfit I could think of. Neon leggings, a polka dot shirt, and a top hat. Because why not? I paraded around the living room, waiting for mom to do a double take. But all I got was a distracted, hmm, interesting interesting choice, Maddie, as she continued scrolling through her phone. Not one to give up, I launched into Operation Kitchen Calamity. I took over the kitchen, determined to cook a meal so spectacular that mom couldn't ignore it. Let's just say the kitchen looked like it had been hit by a culinary hurricane, and the meal I produced was, well, let's call it abstract art. Mom came in, surveyed the chaos, and calmly ordered a pizza. Pizza. Finally, I played my last card, Operation Academic Alarm. I've always been a straight A student, so I figured bringing home a less than stellar grade would surely sound some alarms. I presented mom with a C plus paper, my heart racing. She glanced at it, said, just a small bump, Maddie. You'll do better next time, and dashed off for a photo shoot. That's when it hit me. Mom wasn't trying to ignore me. She was just caught up in her own world. As I navigated through mom's modeling career, things at home took a turn for the worse. My parents, once the epitome of happily ever after, began to argue constantly. It was like living in a reality show, but without the luxury of changing the channel. Eventually, they decided on a divorce. And just like that, my family's picture-perfect frame shattered. Post-divorce, dad became my one-man support system, juggling work, house chores, and my ever-fluctuating moods. I, on the other hand, transformed into this brooding, angry version of myself. I couldn't understand why mom didn't fight for my custody why she didn't come to see me on weekends allocated by the court. It felt like she had just walked off. Years trickled by, and dad, bless his heart, found love again. He met someone at work, and before I knew it, wedding bells were ringing. Enter my stepmom, Karen, and her son, Alex, who was about my age. I remember thinking, how could dad do this to me? Replace us just like that. Karen tried. She really did. She'd make my favorite cookies, ask me about my day, and even tried to bond over cheesy rom-coms. But I wasn't having any of it. I remember this one time at dinner, she made lasagna, mom's specialty. I stared at the dish like it was an alien invader and said, ah, it's not as good as my mom's, and pushed the plate away, leaving her with this hurt look I now regret. And then there was Alex. He was just this awkward kid trying to fit into a new school, a new family. I'd be tapping away on my phone, adding everyone to the family group chat about movie night. Everyone except Alex, that is. 
Hey, Maddie, did you add me to the group? I didn't get a message about a movie, Alex would say, looking all confused. I'd feign surprise. Oh, no, did I forget you? My bad, it was totally an accident. But inside, I was chuckling at my craftiness. And his favorite video game? I'd sneak into his room, swipe it, and then just sit back and watch the show. Where's my game? I left it right here. Alex would frantically search, turning the house up upside down. I'd lean against the doorway, barely hiding my smirk. Looking for something? I'd ask innocently. But the piece de resistance? The haunted house prank. I told Alex the most bone-chilling, hair-raising tales about our house. Did you know this house is over a hundred years old? And rumor has it, it's haunted by the ghost of a cat. At midnight, you can hear it meowing. I said, my voice low and spooky. Alex's eyes would widen. Seriously? A ghost cat? Do you think it's here now? I'd nod solemnly. Oh, definitely. Listen carefully at night. You might hear it. The look of sheer terror on his face was priceless. I remember this one particular day, Alex had made this little model car for a school project. He was so proud of it, his eyes practically sparkled. But all I could see was red. In a moment of pure spite, I accidentally knocked it off the table, shattering it into pieces. The look of devastation on his face haunts me to this day. I knew I was being mean to Alex, and deep down, I knew that wasn't really me. I'd always prided myself on being the cool, funny girl, not the mean stepsister straight out of a fairy tale. But then there were those long nights, just me alone in my room, where I'd cry for hours. It was like I was lost in this maze of emotions, not really sure which way was up. Life at home felt like a never ending roller coaster ride. Even dad, who was usually as cool as a cucumber, started showing signs of strain. One evening, as I walked past him glued to the TV, he suddenly paused and turned to me. Maddie, we need to talk about your attitude towards Karen and Alex, he said, his voice firmer than usual. I shrugged, not really wanting to get into it. What about it? I replied, trying to sound nonchalant. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. You're not making this easy, you know. I get it. It's a big change, but they're part of our family now. I crossed my arms, feeling the old, familiar anger bubbling up. Yeah, a family that got rebooted without anyone asking me. I shot back, my voice tinged with bitterness. Dad looked at me, his expression a mix of frustration and concern. Maddie, it's not about rebooting. It's about moving forward, together. To add to my daily dose of awkward, Alex began attending my school. Great, just what I needed. A living reminder of my new, unwanted family life. At school, I treated Alex like he was invisible, never letting on that we had anything more in common than the school logo. Then there was Jake my boyfriend. Jake had this way about him. You know, the kind that would make everyone in the hallway do a double take. But beneath that charming exterior, there was a not so great side to him. I remember this one time we were hanging out with his friends and he just randomly said, <laughs> Maddie, that outfit's interesting. Did you get dressed in the dark? His friends laughed and I tried to brush it off with a nervous giggle. <laughs> Very funny, Jake. But deep down, it stung. And then another day, in front of the same group, he picked on my laugh. You know, Maddie, your laugh sounds like a hyena. It's kind of cute in a weird way. His friend snickered, and I forced a smile, but it felt like he'd slapped me with his words. The worst part was, it kept getting worse. What started as teasing about my clothes or my laugh turned into him constantly putting me down, making me the butt of his jokes. 
One day in the cafeteria, Jake decided to entertain his audience at my expense. Hey, Maddie, did you get dressed in the dark today? He laughed as his friends joined in. I felt my cheeks burn, but I forced a smile, pretending it didn't bother me. But the real breaking point came a few days later. We were at our usual hangout spot near the schoolyard, and I was showing Jake a poem I'd written. He took one look at it and burst out laughing. You call this poetry? It's more like a bad diary entry. He mocked, passing it around to his friends. I reached out, trying to snatch the poem back, but they turned it into a game, tossing it from one to another, each of them laughing harder than the last. My face burned with embarrassment as I lunged awkwardly, desperate to grab my paper. Just then, Alex appeared out of nowhere. He'd clearly overheard Jake's heart harsh words and the laughter of his cronies. Hey, cut it out, give her the paper back, he demanded, his voice stern and assertive as he moved towards Jake. Jake, unfazed, just sneered at him. What's it to you? Trying to play the hero, step bro? Things escalated quickly. Alex shoved Jake, standing up for me. Yeah. I am her brother, and you can't talk to her like that, he retorted. I was a whirlwind of emotions, embarrassed, angry, but somewhere deep down, grateful. I intervened, lashing out at Alex. Back off, Alex. This is none of your business. I snapped. Alex looked hurt, his eyes reflecting a mix of pain and determination. It is my business when someone's treating you badly, he said firmly. Just because we don't get along at home doesn't mean I'll let anyone else hurt you. He walked away, leaving me in a haze of confusion and realization. Watching him go, it dawned on me how blind I'd been to Jake's mean streak. After that face-off with Jake, I felt like I'd been hit by a ton of bricks. It was a reality check about his behavior, and tough as it was to admit, my own part in everything. It was like snapping out of a bad dream into an even harsher reality. That evening, I was at the dinner table, aimlessly pushing my food around, lost in my own world. The silence was deafening. Dad was there too, throwing concerned looks my way. It felt like we were both caught in this silent movie, each waiting for the other to start a conversation. Daddy, we need to talk. Dad finally spoke up. I don't know how we can live as a family if you can't get along with Karen and Alex. Did I make a mistake getting married again? His eyes searched mine, looking for an answer. Seeing Dad so full of doubt because of me made my heart sink. No, Dad, you didn't make a mistake. It's me. I've been really unfair to Karen and Alex. I've been so caught up in my own feelings that I didn't see they were just trying to be a family. I want to make things right, Dad. I'll apologize to Karen and Alex. I just hope they can forgive me. I continued, feeling the weight of my words. To my surprise, Dad called Karen and Alex into the room. I took a deep breath, my heart racing. Karen, Alex, I'm sorry. I've been really awful to both of you. I was just, I was hurt and I took it out on you guys. I hope we can start over. Maybe try to be a family? My voice wavered, but I meant every word. Karen's eyes softened, and she came over to hug me. Maddie, we've always seen you as family. We're here for you. Always. Alex, still a bit hesitant, nodded. Yeah. Let's start fresh. No more haunted house pranks though, okay? He said, a small smile tugging at his lips. We all laughed, the tension melting away. It wasn't a magical fix, but it was a start. A start to healing, to understanding, and to building something new together.